Hey guys, welcome back to another shoe review here at Sportitude. My name's Ethan and I'm really excited to talk to you all things Clifton 9 today. We've been lucky enough to have a few samples of this shoe floating around uh, ready for its release on February 15th when it will be live on our website and in store, but we've been lucky enough to have it in store to try on just for the staff uh, and a few people here to see what we think about it. And we're really excited about this update. Uh, now, to get into it, what foot type do we think is best for the Clifton 9? Uh, as it has been previously, it's really good for that slightly pronated to neutral to slightly supinated foot type. This year, we found it to be a little bit more stable. So if you are someone who does tend to pronate just a little bit, we find it works really, really well for you. But it also has enough lateral firmness to keep you on the right track if you are a slight supinator as well and as standard if you're a neutral foot type you'll get along with most things quite well so you work really well in the clifton 9. for my rotation where i'd work this shoe in is just that daily jogging anything from a 30 minute jog up to my long runs on sunday i love getting in this shoe for those runs it's cushioned so it keeps you protected for those long times on your feet Still, because it is a little bit firmer, it is a little bit snappier through that toe off. So if you're doing a long run where you pick up or you just want to feel a little bit quicker when you're running, it's another really good option for that. Now it's time to jump into the nitty gritty details of the Clifton 9. What's different, what stayed the same, and what features are we really excited about in this new update? As always, we'll start in the upper and work our way through the shoe. Still got that same engineered knit, slightly more breathable in the upper this year. And we found it has slightly more volume and is slightly more roomy in the toe box. So if you've got a slightly wider foot or a slightly higher foot, it will accommodate a little bit better. They've gone for a slightly longer Achilles flare, which we haven't noticed impacting performance at all with a slightly softer ankle collar. Uh, so for some nice snug, tight, but still comfortable lockdown around the ankle. They've slightly changed the gusset in the tongue, so it's only gusseted on one side. In our testing, we haven't found that to adjust our lockdown at all. Still feeling really, really secure across the saddle of the foot. Even when you're going around corners, you're still feeling really secure in the shoe. Now, getting into the outsole, we still have the same durabrasion rubber in the outsole. Starting at the heel, we've got a slightly wider base. So if you're a heel striker, it'll keep you nice and stable through the heel. Slightly more coverage in the rubber in the outsole as well, and a slightly deeper and longer guidance line. Just because they firmed up the midsole just a touch, they're able to do wider and deeper guidance line and flex grooves through the forefoot as well. So slightly deeper through here uh, and slightly wider as well. Because it's firmer, it just allows it to give that slight more flex through the forefoot, through your toe off as well. Now, diving into the midsole. We have a few slight tweaks, but we still have the same compression molded EVA. We just have a bit more stack height. So we've got three mil extra in the men's and two mil extra stack in the women's for 29 and 24 and 32 and 27 in the men's. Now, when we add stack height, we need to find a way to keep the shoe more stable. What they've done here is with the same foam, they've just made it slightly denser, uh, which keeps you feeling more stable as you move through your gait. But to still keep it feeling like the Clifton that we know and love, nice and soft, they've tweaked the geometry of the midsole to give you that soft yet stable feeling. Starting at the heel, what they've done is they've added these deep horizontal cutaways, which will compress as you enter your gait. In the Clifton 8, it was a horizontal cut, uh, a diagonal cutout, sorry. Whereas in the Clifton 9, we have a horizontal one, which will just help compress a little bit more to give you that nice soft feeling as you enter. Moving forward to the forefoot, they've added this concave cutout in the blue foam, where it was convex previously in the Clifton 8. What that concave does is it just adds a little bit more compression through there to give you a nice soft yet responsive feeling as you move through your gait. Whereas the softness came from the density of foam here, they've added some geometry tricks here to keep it feeling nice and soft and cushioned, but to firm it up a little bit, you're adding stability while still giving that responsive feeling through toe off. We also have this early stage Meta Rocker, which we know and love from Hoka, which helps propel you through your gait. And we've been loving that as well in this shoe. Now, if you're thinking of giving the Clifton 9 a shot, there's a few other shoes on the market that we think are quite similar that you may be familiar with, or you might not, that are probably worth giving a try as well. Uh, we think the 
Saucony Triumph 20 is quite similar as a max stack, max cushion, neutral road running shoe we find to be quite similar here. Something that is still soft, cushioned, but still responsive when you're out running as well. The other shoe that we think is quite similar would be the Asics Cumulus 25. It's not out yet, we're expecting it later in this year. We've been lucky enough here at the store to have a sample that we've been able to try on and go for a run in. And we think these two shoes are gonna be quite similar. Soft, cushioned and responsive. So really a good opportunity to give these two a try. Now, for the people here in the store and for myself, we have been really, really enjoying getting out and running in the Clifton 9. With that upper that is slightly more accommodating, it's gonna fit more people better, it's really, really comfortable and gives great lockdown. Through the medial side in the arch, we've been noticing that you don't feel the midsole as much. In Hoka shoes, you do sit in that midsole a bit more and people have previously felt like you can feel that arch digging in a little bit and we've noticed it a lot less in the Clifton 9, which is a big tick. So if you felt that previously in Clifton 8s or other shoes, definitely worth giving it a shot this time. With a firmer midsole, we're feeling more stable than ever in the Clifton 8 while still being cushioned and responsive. It's really, really great for getting out for that long run where you wanna pick it up a bit in maybe the last 20 minutes. You're still feeling responsive, but cushioned and protected from the ground. So there you have it, the Clifton 9. We cannot wait to bring you this shoe in store. With the slightly re-engineered upper, it's more breathable, it's gonna accommodate a few more feet a little bit better, and it's gonna be more stable while still feeling like a Clifton. With that retooled midsole geometry, it's gonna be more stable, still gonna be comfortable, and it's gonna be great for your daily jogs and long runs. Now, if you've got any questions, comments, or theories, feel free to drop them below. Make sure to subscribe and stay notified. I've been Ethan, you've been you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out there.